When people dream about, is this right for me? Should I work in a faith community? How much is a calling? How much is a decision? That is a profound and great question. I would say that um, in general, people of faith sometimes will use the language of calling, um, which I think is to say, whether you're going into a church vocation or you know, becoming an engineer or a doctor or a you know, travel agent or, or whatever, somehow in some mysterious, not fully understood way, God is actually bound up in that decision making and sort of drawing us in a way. And, you know, if we're listening to ourselves and our life, you know, we're feeling kind of pulled toward a thing. And it's not to say that that thing can't change, you know, one, two, three, ten, twelve times in a person's life. I've often said I think that my primary calling is to belong to God and uh, then everything else sort of flows for that. I mean, there are some days in when I wake up as a pastor and think, I want so much to be a barista in Vermont. <laughs> and, you know, and, I, and I don't think God would be mad at me if I decided I'm gonna go to Vermont and wear plaid and you know, make lattes all day. People want more accessibility, relatability, right. accountability. Right, authenticity, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Why do you think that is? Because it, once upon a time, it felt good to have someone dispense every answer to you. Now we want to have a conversation. I think some of the faith paradigms that used to work, you know, I sit in a pew, a person from on high tells me what to believe, and I'm good with that. Yeah. You know, well, people aren't good with that anymore because, and I, and I actually think that's a good thing. I think that a lot of people are finding that the structures around them, whether it's the political structures, the business structures, the financial structures, the socioeconomic structures around them are not life-giving. It's, it's, they're, they're not essential. They're just, mm -hmm. It doesn't speak to what's deepest and most important inside of them. And so, you know, oftentimes when that happens, people will reach for God, how, however they name that God. When somebody does that, it's, they, they, want some, they want something real. They want something authentic. Yeah. And it, it can't be a performance. It can't be a program. Programs don't save people. You know, they don't save their lives. Um, you know, it's, it's got to be real and something beyond them. Has anyone ever told you, I don't feel comfortable having a female pastor? <laughs> well, yes. Uh, so, you know, I, I began in ministry back in the 80s, and I'm a Baptist, you know, and I started at a Southern, I'm no longer Southern Baptist, mm -hmm. but I started at a Southern Baptist seminary. So back in 1981, when I first entered seminary, I mean, all the women Baptist pastors in America could have had their annual meeting in a pup tent. Yeah, I mean, there weren't any. When I became a pastor in Waco, Texas, this was my second pastorate 20 years ago, and on my very first Sunday, my family and I are there, and about 30 picketers uh, showed up from, they had driven, they were not from Waco, I always uh -huh. have to say that kind of, you know, because Waco is actually a, a lovely town. Uh, they drove in from East Texas with their pickets and their signs and protested. On the, and so our, I and our family, my small children and our congregation had to walk through a picket line into worship that day. I remember my son, who was about seven at the time, we're walking hand in hand, you know, and people are shouting and hollering at us. And my, I feel this little tug on my arm and I lean down and Taylor says, Mom, who is Jezebel and why are they calling you that? Really? Yeah. Did you say, well, let me discuss what the Pharisees <laughs> are with you, child? <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> That's right. Pastor Julie, when people walk through these doors, you don't know what they're walking in from, but I wonder, you know, every Sunday, what do you hope after they sit in these pews that they walk out feeling or thinking? Oh, I love that question. And actually, I talked to our congregation specifically about that very thing. My personal hope when people leave is that even more than thinking, um, you know, what a, what a welcoming church or what a, what a great sermon or what a, you know, I love the songs is the sense of what a, what a great God those people belong to. I really pray, I mean, it, before worship every Sunday, we, we pause and we pray and I always include in, 
in my prayer that um, whoever walks through these doors for whatever reason, you know, whatever they're feeling, whatever they're not feeling, that more than anything, they'll feel a connection with the God who loves them.